Greetings, everyone. Well, it's closer look time again here on the Multimedia Chronicles. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Get Smart and Get Smart and Get Smart. Yeah, you get the idea. My Get Smart collection. Basically, uh, the classic Super Spy spoof series and its many spin offs. That's a lot of S words. Anyway, Get Smart today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Now, some of you longtime viewers may recall I did a closer look slash DVD review a long time ago at this wonderful box set of the original uh, 1965 to 1970 series. Um, but that was long before the days of when we went high def, so I thought it would be nice to kind of revisit it. Uh, plus, I've got a lot more stuff for the collection since I did that video, so I thought, yeah, it, it's been a while. We're high def now. Let's revisit the whole thing and kind of show how the collection has grown over the years. So we'll obviously take a closer look at this so you can see it in all its glorious detail and all of the spin-offs, sequels, and reunions and whatnot. So, of course, the original series ran from 1965 to 1970 for 138 episodes. Uh, and then, 10 years later, in 1980, they did The Nude Bomb, also known as The Return of Maxwell Smart, which was a theatrical film, which I really like and a lot of people really like, but some people didn't like because really the only character to return in it is Maxwell Smart. All the other characters were either recast or absent. So, I don't know. It's still a funny movie. I still like it a lot. Just a couple of minor corrections here. It's been a while since I've seen the movie, so just to clear my own memory, I took a quick peek at the cast list on IMDb. So, there are a couple of other characters that do return from the series. We do have Robert Carvelis returning as Larrabee, so that's pretty nice. Uh, we do have the Chief, however, the Chief is played by Dana Elkar in the film because Edward Platt, sadly, had passed away in 1974. And we also have Agent 13, however, he's not played by David Ketchum, as he was in the series and in the later Get Smart Again reunion movie. He's actually played by Joey Foreman, who played Harry Who in the series, so kind of a strange bit of recasting there. So yeah, for the most part, other than Max and Larrabee, it's either all new characters or recast characters, so fans were a little bit disappointed by that. And then in 1989, what many consider to be one of the greatest reunion movies ever made, we have Get Smart Again, which was a TV movie, which reunited pretty much all of the surviving cast coming back as their characters, and it is just so much fun. It is an absolute treat for fans of the original series. And then I guess that did really well, because in 1995, they brought Get Smart back for a new regular weekly series, which lasted seven episodes, and then it was canned. Not even half a season. <laughs> they didn't even get 13 to make a full half season. No, they got half of a half season. So, <sighs> missed it by that much. What can I say? Anyway, um, yeah, and then Get Smart was off our screens for a very, very long time until 2008 when it came back in the form of a big-budget theatrical movie with Stephen Carell stepping into the shoe phone of the uh, classic character and taking over as Maxwell Smart. Now, honestly, I thought Steve Carell was a great choice for modern-day Max, and I really enjoyed this movie a lot. But I guess it didn't do well enough because we never got any sequels. I thought, you know, it'd be nice to have at least a trilogy. You know, three movies with Steve Carell as Max. That'd be great. And uh, around the same time as a cross-promotion with it, they released uh, the direct-to-video movie Get Smart's Bruce and Lloyd Out of Control, which is kind of terrible, but hey, it's it's fun to at least spend a little bit more time 
in that world. Now, of course, as a kid, I watched Get Smart all the time. It was part of my regular after-school afternoon viewing. Uh, at 4.30 p.m., there would be Batman, the 60s series, and then at 5 p.m., there would be Get Smart. And I always kind of thought of Get Smart as the grown-up show because, you know, they, they would smoke and there would be a little bit of... Uh, you know, kind of sexiness to it and stuff like that. So, um, but I mean, really, it's it, it's just a straight up parody of the super spy genre, the James Bond type stuff, uh, as well as being parodies of a lot of other things as well. Like it would also parody popular TV shows at the time. Like there's a parody of The Fugitive. There's a parody of Ironside. And, you know, it just goes on and on and on. But it, it's just such a fun show created by Buck Henry and Mel Brooks, no less. Yeah, so if you're a Mel Brooks fan, you definitely want to check this out. And, uh, and of course, Don Adams was absolutely wonderful as the bumbling spy himself. The kind of secret agent. You know, he kept kind of blowing his cover constantly, but somehow was still a secret agent. Um, yeah, anyway, love Get Smart. Let's not waste any more time. We've got a lot of stuff to go through here. So let's head on down to the black table and take a closer look at my Get Smart collection. Okay, so starting off with the mega set itself. Get Smart, the complete series. This is wonderful. This was an absolute must-buy for me. Huge fan of this show ever since I was a kid. There we go. We got Max himself on the side there. And then over on the other side, same thing. And nothing on the bottom. Now, how does this open up, you may be wondering. Looks like it's sealed from all sides. Well, yes, it is. But uh, take a look here. So it starts with a flap, which opens like that. All right. Then we have the first set of doors. Then we have the phone booth. <laughs> and then we have the five individual season sets inside. And you can see the phone. All, all of these are double-sided. You uh, see there. Double printed on both sides. So very, very nice. So it's a bit of a pain to get the sets out. <laughs> as cool as this whole thing is. It is a bit of a pain to get the sets out. So we're just going to sort of slide them out like this. Ugh. There. They kind of catch on the, the door there, so you got to be careful. Fluff there. And, yep, they're catching on the... There we go. Okay. We got them out. So I'm just going to set this monster of a box aside. It is a nice, uh, sturdy, hard box, so that's good. Everything's very snug and secure in there. And then what we have is the five individual season sets. So let's start with season one and take a closer look at each one of these sets. Okay, so just get up close and personal here. So there you can see we have season one. Very nice 60s designs all over the packaging. It's quite beautiful. Really like this set a lot. All right. And then on the back, you see we've got all kinds of goodies on here. Lots of bonus features, which we'll go over in, in a moment. But first off, how does this work? So this is actually a slip cover. It's a plastic slip cover with uh, see-through portions. And then inside, we've got this lovely artwork of Max. And more of Max. I think they're pretty much all just Max. But, uh, and what we have is a digipack with a booklet. We'll take a look at that in just a moment here. So digipack opens up. Oh, once again, we have the sort of motif of the doors there. Clear package, uh, clear underneath. And there we go. So season one on five discs. Very nice. 
Uh, there we go. So this kind of folds up like, like a map there. So then in the booklet, quite nice, we have uh, disc by disc contents, everything that's on the discs. And some information about the show and the making of it, and trivia tidbits and whatnot. And there we go. So very nice uh, booklets for these. I like them a lot. So let's just uh, take a gander at that, and I'll just go over the extras here real quick. So the extras for Season 1, we have highlights from the Get Smart Reunion Seminar held at the Museum of Television and Radio in 2003, an exclusive featurette, The Secret History of Get Smart, an in-depth interview with series co-creator Buck Henry, audio commentary on selected episodes from Barbara Feldon, Mel Brooks, and Buck Henry, plus vintage clips of early television appearances by Don Adams and Barbara Feldon, series promos, and more. So, quite loaded uh, in terms of contents there. And that's just season one. We have four more seasons to go through. Yeah, no, it's uh, they really did a terrific job on this. The only... Only regret, sadly, is they waited so long to put this set on DVD that uh, Max himself, Don Adams, had actually passed away by the time it happened. So that's kind of a, a sad aspect of it. But they got everybody else they could in on it. So here we have Season 2. Very nice. Yeah, this is a really... Really classy set. This is from the days when they really went all out for DVD sets in terms of packaging and extras. So then this one we slide it out. And there we go. So you have a nice picture of Max and 99. And then 99 on the back. Always lovely Agent 99. Once again, I like how they do this kind of like a spy dossier. And then here we have the Season 2 booklet, which we'll go over in just a moment. And same thing again. Basically just see through artwork of one of the secret doors. And then inside we have the five discs. These are stacked, kind of, but, uh, you know, quite nicely. Oh, I see. They actually have the phone booth there as well. <laughs> I didn't realize there was another picture there. But, uh, and then here, looks like just another door. I see. So they got door, phone booth, door. That's that's how they did it. So that's, that's pretty cool. I'm assuming that's the same for each set. So let's uh, wrap that back up. And just take a quick look at the booklet here. And more information about the show. And there we go. Very nice. Really nice to have these booklets here. I do have a minor issue with my set, which we will get to when we get to that minor issue. I'll be sure to let you know what I am speaking of. Um, yeah, so there we go. That's season two. And then carrying on, we have season three. I like how each one is a distinct sort of color motif as well. So there we go. And then the back. And other spine and then of course on the top and bottom is just the digipack you're not missing anything there it's just just a big fancy schmancy slip cover slide that out and we got max looking very serious in his trench coat very nice and then on the back we actually have a uh not a photo oddly but a painting of the chief yeah I guess, I don't know, they just not have very many publicity photos of the Chief? I don't know. And there we go. And we have the Season 3 booklet. Which we'll take a look at, at in just a moment. Season 3, very, I like this, this color scheme here. So, 
There we go. Very colorful. So let's just take a peek under here. Yeah, it looks like it's the same, same interior art for all of them. So we have the phone booth there as well. And that is that. So we just wrap that up again. And we'll take a look at the booklet. So there we go. Very nice. And more info about the show. It's great stuff. Such a perfect send up of the spy genre and a lot of other uh, sort of popular things at the time. I remember there was one episode was just a flat out parody of The Fugitive, which was a really popular show at the time. And, uh, boy, it is tricky to get them into these slipcovers. Hold on a second here. Wow, really? There we go. Okay, we got it. <laughs> Just got to be a little careful with it. So, yeah, as you can see, I mean, I go to great lengths to keep these sets in impeccable condition. I take very good care of my collection. All right, the next up we have Season 4. Uh, kind of a purpley pink motif here. Very nice. So once again, right there. And right there. And then on the back. And I just realized I've been forgetting to go over the extras. So we'll go over the extras for seasons two and three in just a moment. Terribly sorry. Some of you are probably already typing up angry comments about that. Like, you didn't go over the extras for seasons two and three. It's like, sorry, I'll get to it. I, I made a mistake. We always get to it by the end. And if I forget, I go back and redo it. So here we got this and then the booklet for season three. Again, this is the issue I have with this set. I contacted them uh, a couple times and got ignored asking for the correct booklet for season four. So, eh, I don't know. If Maybe if I find season four on the cheap somewhere, hopefully it'll have the booklet. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, no point in going through that because we already went through it. But we take a look here and see the uh, lovely discs and the... Same interior art. So, yeah, so I guess if something ever happens to my Season 3 booklet, I've got another one. But it's annoying because, of course, all of these booklets have all kinds of cool little behind-the-scenes tidbits and whatnot, not to mention disc-by-disc -disc breakdowns of what's on the discs. I'd kind of like to have all five seasons represented thusly. Yeah. yeah. So, you know what, let's take a look at Season 5, and then we'll just go back and check the extras for all five seasons. Just kind of go that way. Alright, and finally we have Season 5. Nice sort of green and blue motif for this one. I love just how incredibly 60s the design is on these. They're beautiful. So perfect. And there we go. Slide that out, and there we go. Got Max looking snazzy in his uh, suit there. Very nice. And and then we have uh, oh, that's uh, that's Agent Thirteen, I think. Yeah, who uh, is that? Agent Thirteen or Lar No, it's Larrabee. Sorry, it's Larrabee. It's been a while since I've watched the show. I've I'm a little fuzzy on some of the side characters' names. <laughs> anyway, so we got Max here. Oh, thank goodness, it's the correct booklet. Season 5, excellent. So we'll just take a quick peek here. Yeah, very nice, very colorful. It's actually quite beautiful, colorful discard. I, I like that a lot. Um, something you don't see as often these days. Most studios seem to go, which is very boring disc art now and there we go and disc contents Some more info about the show there we go and there we go 
So, I mean, the booklets aren't huge, but it is it is nice to have them. Especially when you've shelled out for a big set like this. I don't remember how much this cost. It was so long ago, but uh, I know it wasn't cheap. And it's like, and you shell out for one of these big deluxe sets back in the day when such sets were really expensive. You want to get all the contents, you know? It's not too much to ask. Anyway, I'll stop lamenting about that. So there we go, season five. So let's just quickly go back through the other seasons that I forgot to go through the extras. So we have season two. There we go. And we have... Uh, so we have an exclusive featurette, Barbara Felden, real model to role model. Uh, audio commentary on selected episodes from Bernie Coppell, who of course played Siegfried, and executive producer Leonard Stern. Historic footage from Don Adams' 75th birthday celebration at the Playboy Mansion. All new highlights from the 2003 Get Smart reunion seminar held at the Museum of Television and Radio. Footage from the 1967 Emmy Awards broadcast, and more. Very cool. Yeah, I remember uh, watching the extra of the uh, the 2003 reunion footage, and uh, I think that was shortly before Don Adams passed away, actually. And, and it, it's it just breaks your heart seeing him so frail, uh, especially when you're you're used to seeing him in well everything else. He was he was such a wonderful physical comedian as well as you know just had impeccable comic timing for his line delivery and whatnot, and it, it just breaks your heart seeing him so frail and uh you know a little bit slow on the draw to sort of get his words out and stuff but uh you know but bless him for you know for toughing it out anyway and and doing that uh that reunion for the fans you know that's uh great he was su such a su he was so generous to to his fans um so season three we have an exclusive featurette spooks spies gadgets and gizmos rarely seen bloopers all new segments from the 2003 Get Smart Reunion Seminar. Audio introductions to all 26 episodes by series co-star Barbara Felden. Audio commentary on selected episodes from Barbara Felden and Don Rickles. And footage from the 1968 Emmy Awards broadcast and more. By the way, I believe uh, there are audio introductions by Barbara Felden on every single episode. Because I was actually watching uh, some Season 1 episodes recently and noticed that that she did an intro for them, and, and they, those seem to be present on all of them. So I don't know why they didn't mention that on the other season uh, uh, sets for the extras. But anyway, it's very cool that Barbara Felden did so much for the, um, for the uh, set. So just getting into season four here. Uh, season four, we have exclusive featurette, code words, and catchphrases. Audio commentary from guest star James Kahn. Wow, he's kind of a legendary actor. Interesting they got him for a, a commentary there. Uh, In-depth interview with Bernie Capel, who of course played Siegfried, and executive producer Leonard Stern. Footage from the 1969 Emmy Awards broadcast, and more. Plus, an interactive bonus feature, the layout of Max's apartment, including keyed locations of all his gadgets. Oh, how cool is that? Yeah, because, of course, if, if you're familiar at all with uh, the show, Max had a uh, delightfully booby-trapped apartment, which often would end up trapping himself or his friends in it instead of the bad guys. But, you know, it was well-intentioned. And then we have, finally, Season 5. Let's just quickly go over the extras here. And there we go. Uh, season 5, we've got exclusive feature at The Fans of Get Smart. Audio commentary from Bill Dana, who played Agent Quigley. Rarely seen bloopers. Barbara Feldon's touching final tribute to Don Adams. Oh, just bring the hankies. Uh, plus an interactive bonus feature, Take the Spy Aptitude Test. And there you go. Very nice. So this set originally came out in 2008, if you were wondering. So it's been out for, what, 13 years? Holy moly. I feel like it was that long ago that I got it, but uh, yeah, there you go. So we're just gonna put all of these back in. So uh, nope, we want to go this way. So season five. Um, hold on. 
Yeah. Season five. Four. Alright. Three. They go back in quite easily. It's just getting them out again that's a little tricky. Two. And one. And there we go. So let's close it up. There we go. There we go. And there we go. All right. So we're not quite done yet because there's a few additional get smart things from over the years. So in 1980, almost 10 years after the show ended, we had Maxwell Smart return in a feature film, a theatrical feature film entitled The Nude Bomb. Um, I actually went to see this when it came out when I was a kid. Because, of course, I watched the show all the time, and I was overjoyed to find out that there was a movie. So, um, yeah, so my parents took me to see this, and uh, it was great. Great to see Max on the big screen, and a lot of fun. So... If we crack this open here, yeah, not much to write about uh, inside, but uh, but yeah, nice to have the movie on uh, on DVD in glorious widescreen. But even nicer to have it on Blu-ray, thanks to Kino Lorber. Yeah, so as soon as I found out this was on Blu-ray, I snapped it up right away. It's like, oh, this is great. Yeah, I uh, I really really enjoy this movie a lot. Uh, some fans have complained that it does. Uh, it doesn't feature as, as many of the side characters of the show. It more just kind of focuses on Max. That said, it still does have the same kind of humor as the show. Um, and I've always enjoyed it. I, I like it a lot. And we've actually got uh, some extras on here. We'll just take a quick look inside. Yeah, typical KL Studio Classics uninteresting label for the uh, disc. But uh, here, why don't you take a look at the DVD, while, uh, which was just bare bones. While I go over the extras on the Blu-ray. So the Blu-ray actually has quite a lot on it. Uh, we've got audio commentary by Sledgehammer creator Alan Spencer. Sledgehammer is a great show that I really need to pick up. It's kind of a, a... In the same way that Get Smart was a parody of the super spy genre. Sledgehammer was a parody of like the super cop genre. Like Dirty Harry type things. Um, and it's a lot of fun. It only ran two seasons, but it was really good. So... Um, yeah, look forward to that at some point, because I definitely plan to pick up the DVDs of those. Uh, we have a second audio commentary by film historian and film critic, critic uh, Peter Tungett. We've got deleted, extended, and alternative dialogue scenes. Uh, textless opening and closing credits. Trailers from Hell with Alan Spencer. And behind the scenes and promotional uh, image galleries. And the original theatrical trailers. So... Yeah, we went from bare bones DVD to absolutely loaded Blu-ray. So not only do we get it in high def at long last, but with piles of extras that we've never seen before. So, yeah, definitely uh, a worthy upgrade. And there's one more edition of the nude bomb that I have, which is the laser disc. Yeah, check that out. Um, this was one of many laser discs that I got in the early 2000s when uh, you know DVD was kind of taking over and laser disc was on the way out. There was a couple of clearance houses on eBay that sold um, quite a few of them for dirt cheap. I think I got this for about five dollars, factory sealed, <laughs> among many others at the time. So there's the, uh, the spine there, and I'll show you the disc itself in a moment. And there you go. So just bare bones, no extras on there. But, uh, you know, lots of nice big pictures. And that was one of the nice things about Laserdisc was they had, of course, huge sleeves. So you had huge package art. Um, unfortunately, they didn't use the actual movie poster for it. They used just, uh, you know, kind of photo montage. But, eh, that's okay. I was just glad to have the movie in uh, what at the time was the best format you could get. So here's the disc itself. These types of uh, plastic sleeves were unaffectionately referred to as elephant condoms. <laughs> so there you go, of course, double-sided. Hey, look, you can see, oh, hi, how's it going? Yeah, you can see the camera there. 
and then there you go. So with the laser disc, uh, this laser disc format, you could fit about an hour on each side. So movies typically, you know, if they were under two hours, would be a single disc with a break in the middle to flip it over. Later, laser disc players uh, had auto flipping, so they would actually have a, a double um, sort of reading head, I guess, that would flip around and they would start spinning the disc in the opposite direction. And you could uh, just sit and wait a few seconds and it would start playing the other side automatically. I did not have one like that. It was just an old fashioned one that you had to flip yourself, but pretty cool. Oh, and I should mention the Laserdisc was not widescreen. It was a uh, full screen Laserdisc, alas. Oh well. So then in 1989, I remember uh, seeing this when it originally aired. This, I think a lot of people will agree, is one of the greatest reunion films ever made for an old series. We have Get Smart Again. And look, 99 is back. Yeah, Barbara Feldon actually was uh, semi-retired when they did this, but she came back just because, you know, for the fans and because she loves Get Smart and what it did for her career and everything. Um, and this is such a great reunion film. It has pretty much everybody who was still alive and was in the original show comes back for this. And it is so much fun. It's just like the old show, but 20 years later, you know, and it, it's just such a great reunion film. I can't recommend this highly enough. If you're a fan of the old show, then you will absolutely love this. It's great. I've watched it, I don't know how many times, so many times. Um, and if we just take a quick look inside... Hey, look, some very nice discard, actually. It's quite quite a nice addition. Uh, but this is great. It's got everything. It's got Agent 13. It's got Jaime the Robot. You got 99. You got Larrabee. Uh, you have absolutely everybody in this who, who as I say, was still alive. And uh, lots, of, uh, lots of other comedic actors of the day that you'll probably recognize from TV shows and TV movies uh, from that era. Uh, great stuff. So, And we have some extras on here as well. Oh, <laughs> no, we actually don't. We have the special features are interactive menus, full screen presentation, scene selection, digitally mastered, and Dolby Digital English 2.0 stereo. Wow, those are some seriously special, special features, man. Yeah, why do they, I don't understand why they do that. And it's from 2002. It's not like it was exactly the dawn of DVD. You know, like, ugh, I don't know. Anyway, great to have this on DVD. I actually recorded this off TV when it originally aired. And, um, you know, SP mode, hi-fi stereo, thank you very much. But still, very nice to have the upgrade to DVD. Alrighty, then last but certainly not least... Six years after the rousing success of Get Smart Again, they decided to bring the series back for Get Smart. It's just called Get Smart Again. Yeah, or, it's not called Get Smart Again. It's called Get Smart. Anyway, so in this case, Max is now the chief of control. And Agent 99 is helping him out. And it's the adventures of, Gets, of Max and 99's son, played by Andy Dick. Yeah, this is kind of a strange animal. I mean, this is basically where the original Get Smart saga ends. I really like the idea of this show, and honestly, it does have some pretty funny moments in it, but it's just not quite the same. I mean, really, you want to see Max out there in the field, you know, beating the bad guys and fighting chaos and whatnot, and he does get quite a few moments to shine in this, but it's really, it was the, an attempt to do a passing of the torch, I guess, to a new generation of spies and such. And it just didn't quite work as well, which is why it only lasted seven episodes. Yeah, it's about as short-lived as short-lived shows get. <laughs> they didn't even get a full half a season. They got half a half a season. So a half season would have been 13. They got seven. So anyway... All seven glorious episodes are here, and you can see how the Get Smart saga ended in 1995 with a bit of a whimper. But, I don't know. I saw a few of these when they originally aired, and I thought it was okay. It wasn't great. It was just great to see Max back, honestly, just to see Don Adams back in the role that really made him famous. So, good stuff. Any actual special features on here? 
Oh yeah, special features. We have two mini-sodes. We have an episode of News Radio, Super Karate Monkey Death Car, and an episode of TJ Hooker, Partners in Death. But these are mini-sodes, which means they are heavily edited, heavily truncated, and abridged versions of those episodes to cross-promote with other releases at the time. I don't even know why they bothered with that. Why don't you just put a trailer? Why would you do that? I don't know. Anyway, if you want to complete your Get Smart collection, be sure to get this one, because it is part of the saga, and it is canon to the original series and Get Smart Again. It essentially continues on, you know, a few years after the events of Get Smart Again, and, um... Yeah, just kind of wraps everything up. Well, it ends, but <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, this is the last thing of Get Smart, the original version. So, of course, the next time we would see Get Smart wouldn't be until 2008. What, 23 years later? When Steve Carell stepped into Maxwell Smart's shoe phone and uh, we got the Get Smart movie. Honestly, I thought Steve Carell was a brilliant casting choice for, like, an updated version of Maxwell Smart. I really like this movie a lot. I think it's hilarious. The outtakes in this are hilarious. It's just really captured the spirit of Get Smart really, really well, I thought. And I absolutely loved it. Um, yeah, it's great stuff. Uh, quite a lot of special features on here, which we'll go over in just a moment. So, if we go in here, so we have, ooh, a Get Smart DVD game, Ch Chaos Control. And this gives you the instructions. I'm not sure how exactly this works. Is this just you play through the menu or something? I'm sure I must have tried this at some point. I honestly don't remember anything about it. But it gives you the uh, the challenges and what. But yeah, I think it's just like a, a kind of an FMV game that they added on there. Kind of fun. Kind of cool. Um, long expired digital copy code. Oh my god, just get out. Long expired digital copy code. And got ads for more Blu-rays. Wow. Wow. With Blu-ray, experience how movies are meant to be lived. Okay. And important ones. Oh, yeah, you might need to update your firmware. They All, all the early Blu-rays had that. It's like, it might not play, so you might just need to update your firmware. It's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. So, here we have... Just spin that around there. All right. So, here we have the movie disc, of course. And... Oh, yeah, this is back when the digital copy would come on a disc. So even if you copied down that long-expired code, you still wouldn't be able to play the movie because you need the disc. Sorry. Oh, and look at this. Okay, Chaos Control is actually a full-on FMV game on its own DVD. How cool is that? Well, I'm going to have to try that again because I, I don't really remember anything about it or if I ever played it. But, uh, but yeah, cool stuff. So, what do we got for extras on here? We have quite a lot. Uh, play movie straight through or in comedy optimization mode with Get Smart Takes. Over 45 minutes of hilarious alternate jokes. I don't know if I've ever watched it in that mode. I should do that. Next time I watch this, I'll watch it like that. It'll be like the movie that never ends. 45 minutes. It's already 110 minutes. So it'd be a hundred. It'd be like two and a half hours. <laughs> awesome! I'm down. Challenge accepted. Let's see. The old I hid it in the movie trick. Find where director Peter Siegel concealed references to the classic TV series. See, that is cool. That's how you do a remake slash reimagining slash reboot. You put fun stuff in there for fans of the original. Uh, the right agent for the right job. Behind the scenes training. Max in Moscow, on location or on a soundstage. Watch and decide. Language lessons. Spotlight on linguistics master Steve Carell. The vomit reel. More on-screen ways to depict it than you'd ever think. That is... I laughed so hard. If you've seen the movie, there's a scene where uh, Max is in a fighter jet racing across the world somewhere. 
and he just gets violently airsick from like the speed and loop to loops and everything. And so he's vomiting into this vomit bag and it's like literally overflowing as he's trying to hold this thing. And it basically shows all of the, the outtakes from that scene. And I'm amazed they got any usable footage at all because everybody was just dying laughing at how just ridiculously over top over the top it was. And Steve Carell couldn't stop laughing and everything was... Yeah, it's it's hilarious. If you ever need a laugh, watch the vomit reel. Um, we got Spy Confidential Gag Reel, Spying on Get Smart's Bruce and Lloyd Out of Control, and a Blu-ray exclu exclusive bonus disc, Get Smart Chaos Control DVD game, which we already talked about. So there you go. So Bruce and Lloyd out of control. Well, Bruce and Lloyd were basically the sort of gadget guys in control who would, uh, you know, help out Max with uh, different gadgets and stuff. And they got their own direct-to-DVD movie. Look at that. So, of course, I had to get that because I just need all things get smart. So there you go. I'm pretty sure I watched this. I don't remember a damn thing about it, though, which probably speaks volumes. I mean, this was just made as a sort of quick cash-in, tie-in thing, right? But, uh, hey, why not? I'm a completist. We'll get that. Oh, what do we got here? Is this a ticket? Oh, I get it. They released this to video while the movie was in theaters. So you could actually... I mean, they give you a ticket. To go see the movie. How cool is that? So you buy this, you get to see the movie for free. That's pretty awesome. Wow. Cool. Well, obviously, I just wanted to keep that. And then uh, get our important notice to update your firmware again. Can I? No, it has to be folded because uh, it's too long. But anyway, very cool. So there we go. The complete Get Smart reboot saga. It was kind of unfortunate. I was hoping they would do at least a sequel or two. Maybe a nice little trilogy. I really enjoyed Steve Carell as Max. I thought he nailed it uh, pretty much perfectly. Um, you know, being faithful to the original, but also putting his own spin on it. Really enjoyed that a lot. Thought it was hilarious. And uh, But sadly, no more. That's all we got. But that's okay, because we have the ultimate spy mode that gives us 45 more minutes of it. So there we go. I'll have to check that out next time. Alrighty, so that, ladies and gentlemen, is all she wrote for Get Smart, the original, and the remake. Uh, let's put that down there. And there we go. More Max than you'll know what to do with. Alright. Well, I almost got them all in the screen, but uh, missed it by that much. And there you have it. So yeah, lots of uh, lots of laughs to be had there. So as always, if you'd like to add any of this stuff to your collection, I will include Amazon links in the description below. I don't think you can get this specific set anymore because it was kind of a limited edition at the time, but it has been re-released in several forms over the years, so I'll, I'll put whatever links I can find down there for you. And as always, big thanks to those of you who use my Amazon links because it does help to support the show pretty directly, and it doesn't cost you any more. You know, they send a little kickback my way for, as a thank you, you know, for you using my links. But, uh, yeah, so I really appreciate that. Thank you very much, guys. Um, yeah, so that is it for me to you for now. So thank you very much for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors. Be sure to catch me on Twitch. I stream just about every day. And I will see you next time. Until then, sayonara. <laughs>